Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, uh, it's a, a carpe diem. It's a popular phrase that means seize the day. Um, it means taking an active and aggressive sort of attitude towards life. You could just sit back and, and take whatever life throws at you, or you could do something. Change the tra trajectory of the life with, of your life with the decisions that you make. Um, seize the, the day is a concept that has been seized by many different people uh, in many different ways. Uh, most, most cultures and causes value this uh, sort of attitude. In, in workplaces, it's called being a, a self-starter. Um, it encourages entrepreneurship, uh, action, and, and creativity. The motivation behind carpe diem usually comes from a drive, a desire to do something that leads you uh, to action. Um, uh, my, I usually use my remote. My remote's not working. Would you go to the slide? We'll see if it charges later. Um, I recently watched um, the movie uh, Hamilton uh, on Disney Plus with my wife. Uh, some of you have seen that movie, I'm sure, or seen it actually in theaters, perhaps. For history buffs, Alexander Hamilton has always been an intriguing and dynamic character, a whirlwind of activity who wrote like it was going out of style, and a great example of seizing the day without hesitation. Um, perhaps better than any definition of carpe diem is the word sung by Hamilton repeatedly in the movie, I'm just like my country, young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. Um, scrappy and hungry, is the right sort of attitude if you want to make noise or advance in life. Um, no matter where you start, it's more likely to help you than not to help you if you're actively looking for opportunities, ready to pounce when they come your way. It's true of academics, athletics, workplace, arts, or just about any arena, really. On the other hand, if you give up easy or don't take the initiative, uh, you'll miss out on lots of opportunities. In our reading for today, Paul talks about taking it, applying that attitude to God's coming kingdom in Jesus. For thousands of years, God's plan of salvation has been building to Jesus' arrival. It was Jesus who brought about a new thing, um, it was Jesus who brought about a, a new thing, a new era, a, a new testament, a new creation. And now the Corinthians, who Paul is addressing, oh, um, now the Corinthians, who Paul is addressing, uh, are once again having an opportunity to be part of God's new creation. My thing's working now. Um, uh, but the problem is, that some of the Corinthians are starting to back away from the faith. They hear challenges that Paul is facing. They're facing some of their own hardships. And since Paul's not there, right, he's not, he wants to be there, but he's not, the history tells us, and as his own letter tells us, Paul's not there to correct and shepherd them, so they're even more prone to drifting away from the faith. But Paul tells them they should be doing the exact opposite. Yes, things are tough, he says, uh, and not so subtle, he says, but guess what? Things are even tougher for me. Uh, but that's exactly because something seismic is taking place. And it's not time to be timid. It's time to be bold. Paul uh, doesn't want the Corinthians to miss the critical decision. What a critical decision they are making. Uh, you know, we are, we're always, we're constantly making choices about all kinds of things, including what's important to us or, or what takes priority in our life. Do I want to do this chore or do I want to do that chore? <laughs> or do I want to do this chore or do I want to watch TV or look at my phone? Uh, do I want to eat chicken, beef, or vegetarian? 
What's more important to me, time or money? Uh, the Corinthians were making a choice about what was most important to them, but they were sort of doing so without realizing it, and Paul wants them to wake up. Did they want the gospel, or did they want an easier life? Would they trust in the words of Jesus, or did they prefer doing what was more socially acceptable? Did they want to be part of a genuine community defined by the love of Christ, which certainly did include some suffering and practicing patience and perseverance? Or would they prefer their life to be a, a bit more shallow, but easier and filled with more pleasures? This choice was not just one choice among many, though, Paul tells them. This was the choice, the most important choice that they needed to make. This serves as Paul's uh, urgency is a reminder to us, too, that, that we're not just to kind of float through life, and particularly not when it comes to our faith. Take a second and put your life on pause, and is the path you're on really the one you want to be on? Where is it leading you? And will you be fulfilled when you have arrived? That's the choice we ask ourselves, and it's also the, the question we ask those around us when we have a, a good opportunity to do so. You have a choice to pursue all kinds of different things. You have a choice to pursue God's kingdom, your own kingdom or somebody else's kingdom. But the truth of the matter is we're all following an agenda or agendas of some sort, even if you're just going with the flow. That just means you're following somebody else's agenda. Paul uh, reminds us that following the agenda of our Savior, pursuing the God's kingdom is worthwhile. And as he tells the Corinthians, it is more meaningful. It leads to a genuine community um, and a love of Christ, but it will include some suffering. We will have to practice some patience and perseverance. We don't get all the details until we've arrived, but the good news is we've been promised a final destination that is unbeatable. And so that should be our attitude going forward. Seize the day. Take the opportunities life gives you and look not only for your own interests, as Paul says elsewhere, but to pursue God's kingdom. And as, as a church, as a community, we sh or as individuals, we are not to have simply a, a passive faith. We have an active faith. Don't be lazy in your walk with your Savior. Seek out ways to put your faith into practice in your life. Keep your eyes open for opportunity to share this, this wonderful new life in Christ with others, too. And don't miss out on, you know, we take it for granted, but don't miss out on what God has done for you and is doing for you even this day. Don't ignore God's salvation. Sometimes it certainly is hard to keep the faith, and there's lots of more glamorous options out there. But yet whenever we hear God's word, we're reminded of God's great big plan that he's had all along, and it's all pointing to Jesus. He's the, the linchpin of our salvation, our eternal hope. In fact, more important than seizing the day is seizing salvation, or we might say putting faith in the one who has seized us. No matter what, he took the opportunity. Um, like in the parable of the hidden treasure, we are encouraged to drop everything in our lives to just hold on to Jesus. But perhaps even more importantly, where we can be reminded that Jesus has dropped everything to hold on to us. The Philippians chapter 2 says, He did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. He's considered seizing you and me more important than holding on to uh, what was uh, holding on to. Uh, his, what was best for him. To, we are reminded that we have one hope, one Savior, and, and we have yet another opportunity this morning in word and in sacrament to seize the salvation that Christ has given us, to hold, this, hold the, the great treasures of our Lord, his body and blood shed on the cross for us, uh, in, with, and under the bread and wine. 
uh, knowing that salvation has come to us, we seize the day because we only have one life to live. And, and the most important thing in this life, if we really are think about it, and I think we all really believe this, is the life-changing gospel. And therefore, we can see our interactions with the world around us looking for opportunities, not opportunities to advance our own cause, but opportunities to advance the kingdom of God. So we can see things in a different light. Conversations are opportunities to connect with others, and perhaps even uh, sometimes uh, opportunities to connect others to Jesus or to encourage fellow Christians in their walk with Christ. Our relationships are, are opportunities for us to serve others just as Christ served us. Interacting with fellow Christians is a way for us uh, to work together uh, as we follow after Christ. And even, even Christians who, live by, who walk by faith, who live by grace and not by works, even sin itself is an opportunity for us to repent, to come back to the mercy of our Savior. Of course, um, oh, that was the wrong one. Of course, uh, at Grace, we try to provide lots of opportunities to grow in God's word and to serve our neighbor. Uh, we all need encouragement, sometimes correction, and, and reminders or hope of the gospel. And it's certainly not getting any easier. I think we probably would agree on that. And so one opportunity we want to look for is to helping younger generations build their faith. I know kids and parents have so many challenges and opportunities these days that it really takes a concerted effort to raise kids in the faith. So when we have uh, an opportunity to teach young people the faith, well, I guess my attitude is carpe diem, which is why our, our Sunday school our looks and operates a little bit differently, although our focus is still on Jesus. Uh, however, I think it's, it's a blessing for our kids, including my kids and uh, the congregation's kids and Ethiopian kids from two different congregations uh, to work together. Um, and uh, the Oromo congregation, a bonus here is that not only is that uh, they are, they came actively looking to partner in such a way. And uh, I think I've, maybe I haven't mentioned this in certainly before, but the Oromo congregation that worships here at 1030 is practically all families or young folks about to start families. It is uh, exactly, I think, what we've been hoping and praying for. You know, it's, it's, it's often difficult for us to uh, get parents um, and kids here in church at all or to accept our help in raising kids to follow Jesus. And so for me, it's just very uh, encouraging and refreshing to have uh, when, whenever there are families where parents are working with us who want the church's help to raise their kids in the faith. Um, and so, again, this congregation, you know, the, the special, particularly both congregations are, are, are grateful and looking to work with us. Um, but this congregation that worships up here was specifically uh, not just looking to rent out space, but they've been uh, responsive and enthusiastic as well as grateful about working with us. Now, certainly we've, you know, anytime you have people working together, and, and in particular you have people with different cultures working together, you're going to have some things you've got to sort out, wrinkles that have to be ironed out. Um, but I think it really is one, a, a great blessing that we here at Grace have supportive and forward-looking leadership in both our congregation, but also this Aromo congregation has supportive and forward-looking leadership. Um, and uh, that is a, a bigger blessing, I think, than, than we even realize. And my opportunity, what's taking place in Grace is, now this is just my opinion, but the biggest opportunity Grace has had, perhaps for decades, families who, who want to follow Jesus and are asking us for our help, that's exactly what we want, right? I don't think the Holy Spirit would give me any peace if I didn't at least pursue this opportunity. It is, brothers and sisters, the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. We are always having opportunities, and what an opportunity we have in all of our individual lives. Uh, but as a congregation, too, especially, we have this wonderful opportunity. And so 
Let's seize it. If you don't know what else to do, we would greatly appreciate your prayers. Um, uh, we can look beyond the opportunity to look for ways to get to know one another, to get to know this uh, fellow congregations and uh, ways that we can, oh, I'm losing track of where I'm going, working uh, together to share the gospel. Of course, this isn't the only opportunity, but I just bring it up because I think it's a wonderful one, and I want us all to have our eyes open and to be um, looking for ways to share the gospel and, and to partnership. But there's so many opportunities that God will give us if only we'll keep our eyes open, and I think that's probably particularly true at a time like this when things are opening back up and more and more people, um, we have opportunities to share, uh, to build community in Christ and to work together. Opportunities to, to tell the good news and to see God's kingdom come. And so we pray that God would continue to grant us his Holy Spirit to seize the opportunities that, that the Lord puts in front of us to advance the gospel, to serve one another, and that he would also send us his Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and patience and endurance as we navigate these waters. In Jesus' name, amen.